Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mount and Blade Bannerlord and we're doing a uh, another build guide. This one is the Lancer or the Knight build guide. So if you want to be a heavy cavalry uh, using a couched lance or I guess a non-couched lance but a lance for stabbing with uh, and a... I guess sword and shield is your backup weapon. This is the guide for you, so heavy cavalry enthusiasts, uh, stick around because you found the right one. Before we dive on into building our character, though, I just want to say these videos take a tremendous amount of work and a long time to make, so it would be great if you could leave a like on the video, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, if you like the content, that's the obvious thing you're supposed to do, so that way you can see more content like it in the future. But with all that in mind, let's dive on in and start off by creating our sandbox character. Alright, so for starters, we're going to choose our character's culture. There's really two choices here. You could start as the Empire because they've got good mounted heavy cavalry and solid armor and all that sort of stuff. Plus, uh, you get 20% less garrison troop wage, which is nice, and being in an army brings 25% more influence. That's all solid stuff, but uh, I'm not an Empire stand, so I'm going to go with Flandia because you get extra renown from battles, which is excellent. You get more income while serving as a mercenary, which is excellent. And you get a 10% production bonus to villages that are bound to castles. And since the best troop uh, that we can go for with cavalry are a noble troop, and we want to have castles so we can flourish in that regard, that's also a nice bonus. So like I said, you could go with, well, really anything. Uh, the two best ones for heavy cavalry, in my opinion, are the Empire and Vlandia, but I choose to go with Vlandia. So as far as our background, which is going to help us get our starting skills, we're going to start off with you were born into a family of baron's retainers this gives you 10 skill levels and one focus point to riding and polearm which we're going to want to focus on as a lancer and one attribute point to social so uh not the most important thing there but we do get uh to level up riding and polearm right off the bat which are the two areas that we want to focus on the most as a child you were noted for your skill with horses is what we're going to want to focus on this is going to give us 10 skill levels and one focus point to riding and medicine and one attribute point to endurance so it'll give us that endurance and riding which is great because that'll help us level that up like all the village children you helped out in the fields you also gathered herbs in the wild this gives us 10 skill points and one focus point to medicine and scouting uh, and one attribute point to endurance so we get an attribute point for endurance which helps us level up we get a point for scouting which is important as a cavalry unit and we you know get another point towards medicine which is great because it'll help us you know keep our troops alive longer so all good stuff there. As a youngster growing up in Calradia, war was never too far away. You trained with the cavalry. This one gives you 10 skill levels and one focus point to riding and polearm and one attribute point to endurance. So we get another point for endurance and riding, so we're going to level up riding that much faster, and we get another point for polearm. And before you set out for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was... You hunted a dangerous animal. This gives you 10 skill points and one focus point to pole arm and crossbow. Crossbow's not that important, but I guess if you're going to be a knight, it doesn't hurt to have a backup weapon as a crossbow if you want. Uh, but it does give you a point for control, which is useful for leveling up any of those. But we also get one for pole arm, which is the main area that we want to focus on here. So that is all of the options there. And then for our age, I like to select 30, because that way you don't start off as a baby-faced boy. You start off as a man, and you start off with four uns spent focus points and two unspent attribute points and of course for difficulty i like to start off in bannerlord because that's the most fun and then we start our game and so if you start the game uh, according to all of those options you can uh, go ahead and use your two attribute points and your four focus points and i like to put them into i'm going to put those two that we have into vigor since we already have our endurance up to five and this will give us the ability to focus on adding up our extra points into polearm and riding so those are going to be our two main areas that we focus on as a lancer, and that allows us to do that. So if you if you do everything that I've just showed you, you know, create your character just like I did, and distribute your points thusly, you'll start out with four for vigor, three for control, five for endurance, two for cunning, three for social, and two for intelligence. Uh, as far as our skill levels go, we'll have 30 in polearm, 30 in riding, 10 in crossbow, 10 in scouting, and 20 in medicine. And then for our focus points, we'll have a full 5 for polearm, full 5 for riding, 1 for crossbow, 1 for scouting, and 2 for medicine. Uh, and right off the bat, you'll be able to choose a polearm skill and a riding skill. So it uh, just immediately starts you off as a pretty solid uh, Lancer right off the bat. And you can basically immediately pledge your sword as a mercenary uh, with this option because it's, it shouldn't be too hard to get yourself hired by 
pretty much any faction at this point. So that's starting off. Uh, let's now jump to a save I have of obviously dozens of hours of gameplay where we've leveled up into a significantly higher level knight. So uh, let's let's just jump to that. All right, we're uh, now at our character Leobald. So we're significantly further into game here. You can see we're at level 53. So actually pretty dang high level there. Had to do some skill type exploiting stuff mostly smithing just in case you're wondering but uh anyway you can see we've got quite a few skill points in a lot of different areas but our main areas of focus are one-handed polearm and riding and then we also focus pretty heavily on like athletics scouting tactics charm leadership steward medicine you know all that sort of stuff trade and smithing obviously to make money and to get as much xp as possible are also areas that we focus on but the main things you're going to want to focus on for a knight are your polearm skills and your riding skills and then we've got a couple extra ones scattered around that i find make you a more effective knight so we'll start off with polearm and so the first skill to focus on for polearm is cavalry that's the one at level 25 this one increases your damage by two percent with polearms while mounted cavalry troops in your formation you are leading have their damage increased by two so that one is obviously an important one for you personally and also any troops that you're leading. Then I like Keep at Bay, which says Polearm Thrust Attacks Ignore 25% Knockback Resistance. Uh, that one's great if you are using a Polearm that you couch and so you're, th or are, well not, not one that you couch, one that you thrust. Uh, so you can thrust or couch with a couchable lance, but you can't couch with one that's not. So anytime you're doing a thrust with a Polearm that way, it ignores 25% of their Knockback Resistance, which I find pretty useful. Then at level 75, you have an option and you can eat uh, if you're being a knight or a lancer i don't consider uh, one that uses a swinging polearm to fit that play style so I obviously go with clean thrust which increases your thrust damage with polearms by 10% and it gives uh, you know a bonus to infantry troops in your formation but I don't care as much about that because I typically lead heavy cavalry when I'm playing as a lancer uh, so clean thrust for that one then at level 125 we have the lancer skill which increases your speed damage bonus with polearms by 20% while mounted uh, which is super useful because if you're riding a nice war horse or noble mount and riding nice and fast you get that speed bonus while this boosts it up to 20 percent then at level 150 we have the skewer perk which says your couch lance now has a 30 percent chance to stay couched after it kills someone that's great because if you're using a couchable lance like i like to uh and you get the first kill this one gives you a 30 percent chance to stay couched so you might get the next person in line uh which is great and makes it pretty effective on a heavy charge the next uh polearm skill that we want to focus on is at level 225 it is unstoppable force this one says your couch lance attacks deal triple damage against shields so that one is awesome it also gives you a bonus for your cavalry troops in the formation you are leading have their speed damage bonus with pole arms increased by 30 percent so this one makes you more effective and the troops that you're leading more effective but this one's great because it makes even a shield wall made up of sturgeons or people with the pavis shield or something like that a ridiculously good shield this one gives you triple damage against them with a couch lance basically making sure that you can take them out in one hit which is great uh, and and then finally for uh, pole arms, I like the sharpen the tip one, which just increased your thrust attacks with pole arms by 5% for damage. So makes it even more effective. So as far as pole arm skills for our ultimate knight build, those are the ones I recommend you focus on. Uh, so not every single one is going to affect it. So you can make some of those individual choices yourself, but the ones I highlighted are very important. Next, we'll move on to riding. For riding skills, we'll just go through through them pretty quick we want full speed because that gives you an increase to your charge damage uh we want well strapped because that one is going to increase your mount's hit points which is important because you do take a lot of damage as heavy cavalry uh then we want nomadic traditions because this will give you the speed boost because you're leading an army primarily made up of mounted infantry and melee cavalry so that one makes you faster then we want sweeping wind because that's gonna increase your mounds to, uh, your mounts top speed by five percent and increase your party speed by two percent then we want mounted warrior because it's going to increase your mount melee damage by 5% and give you uh, the same boost for any melee cavalry that you're leading. At level 175 we want Riding Horde because that's going to help have the speed of the penalty for herding so if you carry in a bunch of extra horses with you which I like to if I'm leading a cavalry army uh, this makes it so you don't have that huge herding penalty. Next we have Thunderous Charge which gives you a 20% battle morale penalty boost uh, for any kills that you do well mounted melee wise so as a knight or lancer that's the main type of kills you're going to be doing so this will help you inflict more morale damage against your enemy and also do the same for your troops at level 225 we have the cavalry tactics skill so that one is going to increase the volunteering rate of cavalry troops uh by 30 percent in towns that your clan governs so it makes it easier to get 
your hands on more cavalry units. And it gives you, uh, it says mounted troops have 50% reduced wages in governed settlements. So any that you have in the garrisons at your settlements, uh, it's going to cut down their wages a lot. So it makes that easier to keep a backup army of cavalry when you're at war. Then of course, at level 250, we have tough steed, which is going to increase your mount's armor by 20%. And mounted troops in your formation gain plus 10 mount armor. So makes your troops a lot less vulnerable against enemy pikes and arrows. And then of course, this one isn't a choice, but the way of the saddle increases your charge damage and maneuver by plus one for each 10 riding skill above 200 so you can see we're at 324 so that is a significant advantage and it boosts our charge damage and maneuver by quite a bit so all good stuff but those are the riding perks you want to focus on if you want to be a really good uh lancer slash knight in uh Mountain Blade Bannerlord. There are also a couple other skills scattered around that I would like to focus on. The first one is a tactic skill, and this is the level 250 tactic skill, which you can see I don't have yet on this player, but uh, it's one to focus on, which it gives you a boost for your well, it just says cavalry troops in your formation deal 2% uh, more damage to enemy infantry units. Uh, so this makes your your cavalry units more effective against infantry units, uh, units, so that's why that's an important skill. Next up, we have a scouting skill at level 150 for scouting called Mounted Scouts. It says if your party has more than 50% cavalry, you gain 10% sight range bonus, and it gives you a, a boost to your party size by plus 5. So this one's great because if you're leading a cavalry army like I do, it's going to be usually almost entirely cavalry, and so hitting that 50% threshold is really easy. And then you get a sight bonus, which is really nice. So that's why I like that skill for this one. Next up, we have a leadership skill, the one at level 200 called Lead by Example. This one increases the rate of recruiting melee prisoners by 50%, and cavalry troops generate 10% more shared experience. So if you're leading an army of cavalry troops, uh, this helps generate more shared experience, which helps you level them all up easier and, you know, level up your companions and you and all that sort of stuff. So it's great to have that boost to shared experience. So that's why I like lead by example. Uh, another one is a medicine skill called sledges. This one decreases the wounded party speed penalty by 50%, which is great because it allows you to move around quicker even if you have wounded troops. But... It also increases the health of every mount in your party by 15. So this one gives all of your horses, including all of those ridden by your, your fellow knights, a, a sweet boost to their health. So very useful skill there. And then finally, we have a one-handed perk called Cavalry, which says your one-handed weapon damage is increased by 5% while mounted, and cavalry troops in your formation you are leading have their melee damage increased by 5%. So this one makes all of the melee damage that any of the cavalry troops you're leading, uh, it makes them 5% higher, but but it also gives you a boost to your one-handed weapon, which you use on horseback. And since I switch back and forth between the polearm and one-handed weapon, depending on if I'm doing a full-on charge or if I've slowed down and I'm doing shorter swipes, then I'll use my one-handed a lot more. So that one is also quite important. But that is all of the skills to focus on if you are trying to build an overpowered heavy cavalry unit slash knight lancer type person in Mountain Blade Bannerlord. As far as your stuff that you're going to want to use, obviously you're going to want to use nice heavy armor. I'm playing as a Vlandian, so I've got my favorite Vlandian suit of armor on here. You're going to want a good horse, good horse armor, but most importantly, you're going to want to focus on a nice loadout. So when I play as a Lancer, you don't have to have a throwing weapon, but if you do, the Jareed is the best throwing weapon in the game, or at least the best one that's non-crafted, so the best one you could just buy. Uh, and I like to, because the only major things that you have to use is you have to have some sort of a pole arm. I prefer a lance that can be couched, and so the best one for that that I like to do is the Noble Cavalry Lance. If you can't get the Noble Cavalry Lance, the Druznik Lance or the Heavy Druznik Lance are also both very, very good uh, pole arms that you can couch. Uh, you also want to have a shield, and my favorite shield for horseback is the Knight's Kite Shield. It works really well. It's big enough to cover most of your body, but not so big that it kind of gets in the way. And it has nice high hit points, so it's a great shield. And then you want a one-handed weapon, and for one-handed weapons, especially when I'm doing heavy cavalry, I like to use maces, and the best mace you can get is the Bone Crusher. Again, that's just non-crafted. You could obviously craft a better one if you focus on smithing. But those are the three that you need. You need a one-handed weapon, a shield, and a lance. Uh, the fourth slot is open to whatever you want, but I obviously am not going to leave it empty, so I like to have a throwing weapon there, just for a little bit more versatility. As far as horses, really you're going to want any sort of war horse with high hit points, high maneuverability, and high speed. Uh, the three best ones in the game are the Wadar Hotblood, the Batanian Thoroughbred, and the Asilagot. Uh, I have the Royal Destrier here just because I don't have any of those three, but the Royal Destrier is also a very, very good horse. So uh, you can go with kind of any war horse or any noble horse in the game will work well enough. 
enough. But if you can get your hands on one of the top tier ones, then I definitely recommend it. So that is the loadout for this unit. And uh, that's everything I have to say today. I mean, the, the two best uh, heavy cavalry units in the game are the Imperial Elite Cataphract. Uh, which is, in a lot of people's opinions, the best one because you have a good horse with really solid armor. The troop himself has the best armor of any unit in the game. Just He has really, really good protection. Uh, they have a nice long lance. So there's a lot of advantages to the Imperial Elite uh, Cataphract. But in my opinion, the Vlandian Banner Knight is still the best uh, heavy cavalry unit in the game. They couch their lances. They're better in a, in a controlled charge. They've, they've got really good armor. It's not as good as the Imperial Elite Cataphract, but it is still really, really good. And they have a great horse with great armor. All around a really good unit. Uh, and if you want to recruit them, the uh, both of them are from Noble Troop Trees. And so for the Empire, you just find an Imperial Castle like Chinopsis Castle. And then you go to the Bound Villages, Chinopsis or Popsia. So you can see Chinopsis is right there. Popsia is right there. And you can recruit the Noble Troop Trees from, uh, from them. For the Vlandians, same thing. You go over to the Vlandian territory, pick out a Vlandian castle, like, I don't know, Drappend Castle, and you can go to Drappend or Valenby. So these two villages right here, and you'll be able to recruit the units that you can upgrade into the Banner Knight. Uh, outside of those two units, the standard uh, Vlandian Heavy Cavalry, which is the Vanguard, and you can get that just from their regular recruits, is also a very good uh, mounted heavy cavalry unit. And I'm actually earning a respect for the Sturgeon Druznik champion, so the Sturgeon heavy cavalry from their noble troop line. I didn't like it for a long time, but I, in a recent playthrough, I was kind of futzing around with it, and I found out it's actually a pretty good cavalry unit. So any of those are going to be excellent options, and leading an army of them makes your heavy cavalry charges devastating. So that is it for my ultimate heavy cavalry slash lane answer or night build guide hope you enjoyed the video hope you found it useful uh, but that's all for today and we'll see you next time thanks for watching another dare to game video if you like this video please leave a like and a comment if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like my content and would like to support this channel consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month it makes a huge difference but in any case thanks for watching and have a nice day i'll see you next time